Okay, here we are. Another episode of Let There Be Talk. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting episode. Me being in rock and roll for a long, long time and having some hearing damage, I would say. Uh, you know, you start to think about how can I help my hearing? And my guest today, Christian, is going to help us out on that from Ear Goes. How are you, buddy? Uh, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Now, is it ear go or ear goes? Ear go. It's, ear. Uh, you, you don't need multiple. You just need to make your ears go. That's what it's all about, ear go. Now, it, it, it is an interesting, um, you know, stigma. I was talking about it because I'm a comedian, so I've been trying to work on this joke, like, you know, growing up wearing glasses you would just be bullied and everything like god ah, you four-eyed freak and you know and then it got hip to wear glasses uh once some hipsters were wearing them and everything and it even got into where people were wearing frames with no lenses so i thought what better way i think to get the hearing aids out there than maybe have like someone like brad pitt wear them you know like someone real hip to where people start wearing them Oh, hey, we can start with you, Dean, right? I guess that, that's pretty hip, isn't it? Yeah, 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 exactly. But I mean, it's just kind of a funny joke because then people would be wearing them like, oh, these, you know, maybe they yeah. wear. Look, look at me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like vintage ones, you know, like these are my grandfathers. They don't even work. <laughs> exactly. Vintage hearing aids. The day that's going to come, that, that, that'll be fun, right? But, but hey, back to your, to, to thinking of, you know, jokes because the, you know, you were made fun of with hearing aids. The problem with uh, all with glasses, right? But with hearing aids, it's something you're ashamed, embarrassed about, right? Because it's, it's coming at it from two different angles, right? Glasses are like super visible and, and people were literally being made fun of, right? Whereas with hearing aids, it's much more of an individual who's like terrified to show the world that you've actually been having a great time. You've been listening to rock and roll. You've been, uh, you know, firing guns, driving motorcycles, uh, you know, doing whatever, uh, because as this must not misunderstanding that hearing aids are only for really old people, right? It's only for the really old people sitting in church with these squealing things behind their, their ears, right? And the, the analogy I always use to, and, and this is not a joke, or maybe you can make it a joke, you're, you're way funnier than I am, but, you know, the analogy, I have two analogies I always use when you sort of compare hearing aids and how people think about it, but, but let, let, let's take the first one. Uh, I'll put on my, my fancy white coat, and we're sitting in an office, right, and uh, you're sitting in a chair, I'm a dentist, I'm whatever, and I'm, I'm looking at you, I'm wearing glasses. First of all, you would never even think about the fact that I'm wearing glasses. If you start to think about, I wonder why this dude is wearing glasses, you'd say, I'm happy he's wearing glasses because he can do his best, right? Whereas if you like take something else and, you know, suddenly, you know, uh, here I am and you, know, you look up and you can see this big old plastic thing behind my ear and I'm, I'm 46 years old, you'd be like, I wonder what's wrong with that guy. Right. Here's a guy in a white coat who's about to tell me something that's important to me. And the dude is wearing a hearing aid. What 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 the heck is wrong with this guy? Right. But that, that's like your gut feeling. And then if you start thinking about it, you should have the same thinking as with the glasses. Like, oh, I'm happy. He's actually doing his best to perform his best. But that's not how we feel. Right. That's how you would feel. That's how I would feel. I spot a hearing aid like a mile away. And I'm like, I wonder what's wrong, right? You know, it, it kind of, you have that skepticism in you, which is crazy, right? It really is, wow, the stigma of a hearing aid. And uh, it, it's almost like, yeah, this guy was, uh, I, I think it was just movies over the years when you were young, the way that deaf people- have a dumb guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly, portrayed in films and everything. And you are right. It's like the second you can hear better, it, you would be like, you should be like, oh, God, I can hear. Cool. You know, but it is a wild thing. Um, the one thing that really always um, steered me away from hearing aids was I wear glasses and I wear nice glasses. And I, they had those ones behind the ear. Your glasses would be sitting all weird and ruined. Yeah. And uh, with like ear go, they go inside and they're hidden. 
Yeah, no, yeah, yeah you, you've seen them, right? Uh, Dean, you, have, you, have, you, have you got a chance to try them on? Yeah, I got, I got some right here. Uh, okay, okay, so yeah, so you, you got there it. Right? it is. But you got, that, you, you got that fancy background, so I can't see anything on your camera, right? You, you look like you're sitting in, I don't know, what, like a really old uh, office there. It's a, I'm like a mid-century. <laughs> Yeah. So, no, you're, you're right. And that, that was, of course, the idea behind Yoko. It's like, hey, we, we, can, we can go on this monster campaign and try to explain people why they need to do something about their hearing. But, but it, it's, it's just, it, it's a very, very steep hill to climb. Or is there a way to make a hearing aid where we, we make that decision your decision, right? So you make the decision whether you want to share your wearing hearing aids or not, right? But if we could create an invisible hearing aid, that, that, that was like, and, and I, I spent 20 years in the hearing aid industry before a year ago. So I, I've been around hearing aids. I've seen the issues. I know the issues, right? And then I met the, you know, the two young dudes, right, from, from a year ago who had come up with the design and the concept. And I was like, holy shit, if they can make that product work, that could really change how people look at it. Because at this point, it's, like, it, it's up to you. You would never know I'm wearing them. Um, and if I want to share it with my friends or family or colleagues, whatever, you know, I, it's my choice to tell them that I'm doing something. But if, if I'm not comfortable to tell them that, hey, I have a weakness, right? Uh, I'm, I'm, do, I'm getting some help. And there's a lot of areas where we're getting some help where we might not share it with the whole world. It's my choice, right? So we put basically the power to the user, right? But that's the whole idea about Ergo. How do we empower people to take control of their own life and get back, you know, sound. There's nothing more important than sound for your well-being. It allows you to be social. It allows you to enjoy. It allows you to relax. Right, it's all of these things that sound do to you. It's 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 one of your core five senses. It's one of the most important. You know, there's studies made, right, where audio is like the biggest contributor to social well-being. Right, uh, you know, the correlation between loss of hearing and isolation, depression, even dementia, is like linear. Right, the more hearing loss, the more likely you are to achieve all of these things that nobody wants, right? We're, we're, we're social human beings, right? We, we want to interact, we want to enjoy, and we enjoy more through sound than even through our sight. Let's talk a little bit about you. You said you've been in the hearing aid uh, world for, what, 20 years or something, some of the pitfalls and the downfalls. What is really kind of the problems over the years of hearing aids and, uh, and and where we're at now, how far they've come. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, the problem of hearing aids is nobody's using them. <laughs> That's really the problem because the hearing, hearing aids actually work pretty well and they work a lot better than they did 20 and 30 years ago. But the biggest problem, just take America. There's 48 million Americans with hearing loss, right? Out of those 48 million, like 94% have mild, moderate loss. That's probably where you're right at. I have a mild loss on my right ear because I probably listen to too much music and I spent too much time on the phone. Uh, but, but, you know, that, that's how it is. But 94% is mild, moderate. The issue with mild, moderate loss is you can get by. You, you can live your life. However, you, you really struggle in a noisy restaurant, in a, in a social setting. It's like, what? What? You know, it, it, it's and you start to get to a point where you kind of feel like the idiot who's just standing and laughing, but you don't really know what you're laughing about because you didn't catch the punch. Right. Um, so that, that's hearing loss. So out of the 48 million, only like 20, 25 percent are actually getting a hearing aid. And those are typically the people who like really, really really need the hearing aid, i.e. The, the 6% who have severe, profound loss, they literally can't hear, right? They can't hear the TV, they can't hear anything, right? Uh, but they need help, they're getting help, right? But the bigger issue is like the 80% of the 48 million people, right? That's a, like plus 30 million people, 35, right? Who are, it's like, ah, I can get by, it's not that bad, but you, know, you end up spending a ton of energy you know, trying to follow, right? You start isolating yourself, withdrawing from situations, right? So, so that's the issue, 
right? You know, at, at sort of the big level. Why is that, right? It's this damn stigma, right? Because traditionally, hearing aids were a big old club. This is this is a new hearing aid, right? They were way bigger, you know, these like big bananas sitting behind your ear, and you, you know. Only you could only get an 80 year old or a 75 year old plus in church to wear, right? Nobody in their right mind would put something like that on because you look like you 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 kind of asked to be made fun of. What has happened in the? I joined. I started looking at the industry in the late 90s, and you know, digitalization, digital chipsets, rechargeability. There's so many technology advancements in hearing aids. So now. This this bad boy, right, which is a traditional behind the ear hearing aid, you know, it, it's pretty jam packed of technology. It's not that visible. It still looks great, but you know, it's it it will help you hear. It will restore your senses, not a hundred percent, but it will give you back eighty percent plus of what you lost, right? Um, of course, I'm excited about Ergo. Uh, I think we we managed to take all that technology and like cram it into to to a piece that will literally rest inside your ear canal. You won't see it. It's not perfect. I think you tried that because you can hear all sorts of weird stuff. It takes some practice. It's a medical device, right? But it works, right? Um, but it requires something. So I think the industry has gone through this massive, you know. I, I would call it modern, you know, the benefits of innovation technology have all been applied to the hearing aid industry. The issue is the industry as a whole, right? Although the products have gotten really good and much more discreet, and there are now options like Eargo out there, the way we talk about hearing aids, the way you get hearing aids, you still need to go to some like, in a weird clinic somewhere, which is in like in a, in a beat down strip mall. And like, uh, where am I going? Is it really, really a hearing aid business or something else that I'm not too proud of walking into? You, you kind of get that shady feeling because the, the distribution structure of the hearing aid industry hasn't changed for decades. It's literally the same as it was in the 70s, you know, all the way back to the you know, 60s, 70s, 80s. It's the same thing. It's the same kind of shop that you need to go to get your hearing aid. I think a lot of that is changing. I, I, I was part of um, you know an, an effort back in the mid two thousands where we launched hearing aids at Costco, right? So we started selling you know hearing aid next to the hot dog stand and the pharmacy, and it's been a whopping. You know the Costco folks were like, "Holy shit, right? <laughs> this is you know." Uh, people people are comfortable to get it right. Costco is the biggest seller of hearing aids now in America, right? Um, I was part of launching it. Uh, I, I ran that business. Um, you know, I, I came from a hearing aid player, right? I helped them sort of set it up. And it was like, you know, a huge success. And I think what happened really last year, end of last year, 2022, is now the government have even opened eyes. The United States government, right? The FDA have gone out and said, you know what? You don't have to go to the strip mall, right? Or, or the clinic, you know, we will now create over-the-counter hearing aids that would allow you to get the same quality, you know, the same technical specifications, safety, efficacy, you name it, but you can get that over-the-counter, right? So you can go into... A wireless store, you can go into, you know, where you are already going, where you're comfortable, where you can actually talk to someone and you can start getting hearing aids there, which is sort of a, from a hearing aid industry, that's a revolution, right? It's so weird that before you needed like a prescription for hearing aid, which always blew my mind. And that always made it even one step weirder. And in the meantime, people are you know, afraid to wear hearing aids, but they'll wear those Apple earbuds all day long, which is hilarious to me. You know, we see somebody coming with those. We don't even think anything, but if they came with like a hearing aid, you'd be like, "Uh Oh, that's crazy. Right now. Let me ask no, no. you, let me yes, ask you cool. something here. Uh, okay. My, my right ear is gone basically from the things you mentioned, rock and roll and my motorcycle. And, um, uh, it's uh, it's an interesting thing to put these uh, these hearing aids in. I tried them out. It was so wild. When you first put them in, 
uh, I could hear the birds in the backyard, which was bizarre. <laughs> I was like, whoa. And then I could hear my hardwood floors creaking and everything. Now I warm for about four hours, work great. But then I took them out. And man, was that scary because you hear how bad your hearing is and the juxtapose, of, you know, in and out. So once you wear these, do you recommend, is there a way to wear them where you're like, I, I need them like at the movies and like you said, noisy restaurants. I hang around a lot of mumbling people. They're terrible. That's a problem in America too. Lazy talking. <laughs> like, and you go, why? <laughs> oh, it makes me fucking crazy. So is there a way to wear these where it won't be so insane in and out? Or once you wear them, do you wear them for the rest of your life? Yeah. No, uh, it's kind of like your glasses, right? Well, 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 you know, you will get the best results if you wear them all of the time, right? What you can do is you can move the programs up and down, right? You can have a much softer setting when you're just hanging out doing your shit, right? And then, yeah, and frankly, the hearing aids will automatically adjust when you go into a more challenging environment, like the movies, the TV's on, there's a bunch of background stuff they will like, you know, it's like game on, right? The, the hearing aids are, are smart enough through the algorithms and so on to, to step up their game. Or you can like tweak it yourself. But because it, it's so much easier for your brain, you know, because if you take them in and out, you're changing the environment and you're like forcing your, your brain to, to adjust. And, and they're made to be worn all day. You, you, you don't want to wear them when you shower and you do your thing in the morning, right? But when you're like ready, like to, to go on, you pop them in, run them through the day, and you take them out at night, right? Because they, they, it's not like a headset that's going to run out of use after two hours, right, or, or one hour. You know, but they will have enough power to last throughout the day, right? Uh, but that's clearly the recommendation. And But, but yes, you know, like glasses, you're not going to get your vision back, right? You're not going to get your hearing back, but you can get it back by wearing a device, Hey, that's a whole lot better than losing out, right? But no, typically when you start going there, I'm, I'm probably a couple of years behind you. I'm, you know, I have like a mild loss, right? But I, but I can feel that I really benefit when I go out if I wear my hearing aids, right? And I even run the damn company, right? I should be wearing them all the time. But, but I also like, okay, when am I ready to wear them full time, right? Um, that is the big question, you know, because I wore them and I said, these are fantastic. Uh, maybe I'll rock them when I'm 60, but I know how great it worked for me. You know what I mean? Um, no, and, and Dean, the most important thing, and I think really the message that, that I'm trying to get across, right? Hey, we will all lose our hearing. It's guaranteed. Every human being is going to lose their hearing eventually. It's just a matter of when, right? Um, you might not lose it at 60 or 70 if you've been living in, I don't know where, right? But you will lose your hearing by 80 or 90, right? And now, luckily, you know, people live much, much, much longer and are active much, much longer. The thing is, the older we get, the harder it is to adjust to anything. So the sooner that you start creating those good habits. It, you know, I, I sound like a damn doctor right now, right? It's like, you should exercise and you can go for a walk and you shouldn't drink that much and all of those things. But the sooner we, we start the healthy, the habits, it's easy for you right now to get it used to because you can actually figure it out. You can figure out the app. You can do all of that. And it'll just be like second nature to you, right? Uh, best, best people I've met wearing hearing aids have just, you know, hey, I'm wearing hearing aids. I'm proud to wear hearing aids. And they, they get, you know, because then they get to hear when they go for a quick walk, they hear the birds. They're like, oh, those, those things that give you that, like, okay, I love life, right? I love life. Those tiny, the crickets, all these small little things, uh, you know, uh, like your, your, your stupid old hardwood floor that creaks, that has a charm to it, right? Uh, you know, so this, you know, this, the younger we are, the easier we adapt and we, we get benefits, right? You get more. It's like, why wouldn't you want to get more? It doesn't cost, it costs you the hearing aid, but it doesn't cost you anything. You're not letting go of anything by putting on the damn hearing aid, right? 
Oh yeah, man. I'm not embarrassed to wear them at all. I, you know, no. there's no stigma with me on it at all. I'm just, uh, you know, trying to figure out when I'm ready to go for it. Um, you know, like sweat and stuff like that at the gym. Is that okay? Yeah. Hey, there's different hearing aids. Most hearing aids in the past had like batteries in them, right? You would open them up. You would have to fiddle with it. It was terrible, right? That, that's why for a year ago, I can only talk about a year ago. You know, these these bad boys are, you know, water resistant. IPX7 is it. So IPX7 means you can't go diving with them, but you can dump them in the pool or in a glass of water. They can be submerged up to three feet for 10 minutes and nothing happens. So you can literally drop this one into a glass of water, uh, you know, sink it back out, dry it up, perfectly fine, right? Um, so back to sweat exercise, go for a bike ride, whatever it is, no, no issues, right? Make sure you clean it, right? That's the whole thing. Like anything else that you would go sweat in, you want to clean it afterwards, right? But, um, but uh, no, no issues, right? Because, they, you know, the whole design, is basically all the electronics, you know, the battery and all of those things are basically encapsulated inside this little, you know, the little cell here, right? And it's welded together. And we can, when you return them to us because they break or you don't like them, we can actually unweld it and get all the components out and, you know, salvage them. And all of those things have been an important part of like how we design hearing aids. It's incredible how small those are. Uh, I, I can't really uh, emphasize enough, anybody that's listening, once you put them in, there's no way anybody's seeing them, and they're super comfortable. Like, I wore them for like four hours, and I didn't even know they were in there. Now, here's a question. People with tinnitus, or is it tinnitus? Or tin I, I heard people uh, lately, yeah, uh, saying it different, t tinnitus or whatever. But yeah, um, yeah, that, that, it, you, you can say it in like my language, my home language, Denmark. It's like tinnitus, right? I mean, as tinnitus, uh, tinnitus. I, I have no idea how to say it. <laughs> yeah, uh, we all know what it is. It, it's that ringing you have after listening to something really loud, right? It sucks. Can you wear them with tinnitus or does it amplify the tinnitus? Yeah, no, but here, here's the deal. T tinnitus or tinnitus, right, is a nerve disease. It's not an actual sound. It's your brain nerves playing a, a freaking trick on you because the, ner the nerve has been damaged. So the more sound you get, you're not amplifying it. You, you can't amplify that. You can amplify it because your tinnitus gets worse, right? But, you know, it's, it's a nerve damage. It's your brain playing tricks on you. That's why you can't fix, fix it. Typically, what happens to a lot of people with tinnitus is by having more stimuli, it's basically masking the tinnitus. So frankly, if you, if you wear a hearing aid, you could be in a situation where you end up masking some of the annoyance, right, or the nuisance, because it's that constant beep that just keeps going, right? Um, and if you suddenly are actually getting amplification, suddenly you can actually hear the bird instead of the freaking beep, right? You, so it's not a it's not a guaranteed solve, right? You know, but tinnitus is basically it's like people who get their finger chucked off, they can still feel their finger. You know, it's those types of it's so it's nerve damage. Let me ask you this. It is funny. Um I I interview a lot of rock and roll people on my podcast, and I remember one of them uh specifically. We closed the door, got ready for the interview, and he said, Let me ask you something. Uh headphones and i said no and then he said carol hearing aids and he you know he snapped for the hearing aids but there are tons of musicians that wear these and don't really say anything about it isn't that wild no no it, it, it's so wild because it, it's back to the 48 million americans right and of course you know hearing loss is natural it's gonna come with age right that, 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 that's just the part of getting old Sorry, right? Like everything else, we lose our hair, our our hair color changes, our muscles start falling or failing, right? But that's that's a function of getting old. It's natural. However, the more noise you're exposed to throughout your life will accelerate it, right? So if you've been riding motorbikes, if you've been serving your country, if you've been firing a gun, if you've been too much damn time on the phone, and of course, talk about rock and rollers, you, you, you know, that, 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 
it will accelerate it. It doesn't mean it will happen immediately, but it will happen faster, right? So, so yeah, it's going to come, right? And, you know, with musicians or anyone who loves music, you don't even have to be a musician. You just have to enjoy concerts, right? Concerts is the worst thing because they crank it all the way. Uh, so you literally can, like, feel everything going through your body, right? Including your ears. And you want to get the full experience so you don't wear your plugs. At least that's what I've been telling myself at Metallica, right? I'm like, I want to, I want to, like, I, I want to be like completely X-rayed and and feel every, you know, every every dB of every sound pressure going through me. Um, that's the best way to destroy your hearing. It doesn't mean you shouldn't go to concerts. You should protect your hearing. But so for musicians, right? And you know, that was for me, and I think that's also how we probably got introduced. Dean was um, we have an office in Nashville. Uh, Tennessee, because we have all our support. We got audiologists uh, there working to make sure we can help out people. And Nashville is great because Central Time Zone covers the country, so you'll always speak to an American and not to somebody who doesn't speak English as their main language. So they're all out of Nashville, and our head of sales uh, is, like, is like big in the music scene. He's like backing all the bands up and down Broadway, uh, you know, and just loves music. And he, he knew Charlie Benante from Anfrax, and he calls me up like, Christian, uh, I gave away a pair of hearing aids uh, to, to my boy, Charlie. And I was like, who? And he's like, Charlie Benante. It's like, no effing way. There's no way. And he's like, yeah, he loves him. I'm like, do you want to talk to him? I'm like, do I want to talk to Charlie Benante? I'm like, sign me up, right? Uh, like the, the big four, seriously, right? And so I meet Absolutely. up with Charlie. So I'm meeting like this living God who like like walks in, right? I don't know if you ever met Charlie, right? But he is like the most down to earth, oh yeah, stand up guy I've ever met, right? He comes in, he's not a loud ass like myself or maybe you, right? He's very you know calm, measured, right? And he's like, yeah. And we'd ask him, Charlie, could you speak to one of our partners here about hearing loss and maybe? give him, you know, play a little bit, right? Um, and he's like, I want to make sure I get this right. I want to make sure that I'm saying all the right things, like promoting your product. I'm like, Charlie, we don't want you to promote our product. We just want, want you to tell us about hearing, right? And why it matters so much and, you know, why people should do something. So, so here we are at like the sales event with one of our partners, right? We have like five, 600 people in a big old ball, ballroom, Charlie and like we roll in a drum set and Charlie goes on like there's this big video screen behind him like showing all, all, all the footage of these monster rock stadium concerts he's been doing and then he just goes off right and he you know kills it right everybody is like in and it has a big old anthrax logo and people are like <sighs> right immediately even those people like me who's not a hard heavy hard rocker you know you cannot not be impressed with the energy and he like goes off, kills it, right? Everybody is like, wow. And then Charlie stands up and he's like, let me tell you how important hearing is, right? And people were like crying and, you know, how, how, and he, he was so honest about how he had lost the connection to his girlfriend, to his daughter, COVID. Suddenly he wasn't on, on tour anymore. He was sitting at home. Uh, and I think Char Charlie's done well, right? So he didn't have the, the financial struggles of others, right? But he was sitting there and his, his girlfriend was really annoyed with him because he jacked the TV all the way up. He couldn't hear what his daughter said. And, and that's what made him get hearing aids. And, and, and luckily we got him into a pair of ear goes and he's now like, he calls them, you know, sexy bad boys, right? You know, uh, you know he, he thinks he's sexy because he can actually hear what his, his girlfriend is saying, right? And... You know, and I was like, Charlie, you know, you're incredible. And he's like, no, this is so important, right? Because we, we, we've all lost our hearing. And of course, him, you know, just sitting there banging nonstop, right? His, his hearing has, has, has been damaged. But, you know, it comes to rock and roll, right? Uh, especially as a musician, right? And I'm, I'm like, hey, how, how do we get all the musicians out there to, because I don't think there's people that are looked up to more than musicians, right? Because musicians 
you know, they're not political, they're not race, they're not anything, right? They're looked up to for their unique skills, right? And it's such an admired group across culture, right? And the more more of these musicians we can get, like Charlie, just to stand up, right? I think Dave Grohl was on the Howard Stern show, and I'm fucking deaf, right? But, you know, how do we get people to say, what, you know, you're come on, you're stupid if you don't do anything about it, right? Why why, why give up, right? Let me ask you, when you are at a concert, you take them out, right, to, to wear earplugs. That would be the proper move, correct? Yes. Um, you want to, you, you would always want to make sure because the, the, the sound pressure in a concert is so loud, right? You would want protection, I would say. The only downside of an ear go you know, hey, this it doesn't double as hearing protection, right? You know, the good thing is it's not going to make it any worse at all, right? It's not going to make, you know, it's not going to further damage your hearing because it has automatic cutoffs. So as soon as the total sound pressure goes above like 110, 115 dB, it like shuts off completely. So you won't... Wow. You won't get extra lost, but it won't protect it, right? But what you want to do at a concert or as a musician, you know, get in your monitors, get in your your plugs, so you take off that like 130, 140, 150. You know, sometimes the sound pressure can get up to 170 dB at peaks, right? And you know that is damaging to your hearing, and you might lose your hearing. But even worse. What, what really happens at concerts with these ex- very loud sounds, very close to speakers, is actually tinnitus, right? You can actually damage your nerves to the point that you get a constant ringing sound, which is sucks. Now, let me ask you this. Now, once you get them in, there's a it, there's an Eargo app, everybody. I want to tell you, there's an app on your phone, and you can pop it open. You can custom set it to different settings uh, if you're, you know... Uh, at a movie theater or watching TV or a restaurant. There's all these settings and it's uh, super easy to use. But one thing I didn't find out yet, are you able to answer the phone on them? Can you talk on the phone and have them as uh, that way? Well, you can answer your phone like this and put it up to you. And, and you can actually hear better what's coming through the speaker. But I, I what what you're talking about is, I have a, like your headset, all right? I have, I have a Bluetooth connected so you can stream audio straight into your ear. And I think that's the, you know, that's the trade-off that we've done at Eargo. You can you can get, you know, the traditional behind the ear hearing aid that can stream m- music or, you know, a phone call. These things, you know, the ear goes because they sit inside your ear canal. Um, so the whole thing about all audio communication that's not wired, you know, goes through Bluetooth radio. Bluetooth, it's a radio signal, 2.4 gigahertz. That's blocked by liquid. And when you put something all the way inside your ear, like I do right now, yeah, there's a lot of liquid around it. Um, you know, uh, we, we obviously have blood in the ear, blood in the head. So it actually acts as a shield for Bluetooth radio signals. So you can't like use it as a headset. You can't stream audio through it. So, you know, what I always ask people is like, what's more important to you? That you have something that's comfortable and frankly invisible or, you know, and doesn't interfere with your mask, your glasses that allows you to be who you are naturally. It's like, if you didn't have hearing loss, right? You wouldn't be able to stream audio into your head anyway, right? You'd need to put on a headset or anything, right? What I always tell people like yourself is, hey, if you want to, if you really want it, you know, what, what works well with ear goes is you can literally put on over the ear headset. You can keep the ear goes on, no problem, right? It, it's going to work fine, right? But if you need to answer a phone call and so on, yes, you need to pick up the phone and hold it next to you, like, like we used to do right yeah now uh we're on Ergo seven right now and seven being the best one correct uh there's other there's other platforms what is the difference between some of the platforms because some people might go on and they say Ergo five or whatever what is the difference yep um so we you know Ergo seven is our seventh generation right so it's our seventh product so we've been at it for a while right so you know we 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 run out the worst kinks 
of, of making a, making a new product work. Uh, so, so think your iPhone or whatever, one, two, three, four, five, right? But, but that, that's really the thinking. So seven is the latest and the greatest. Um, what we do, very similar to what you see on a lot of other electronic devices, like your phone, like your TV, you know, you don't always change the frame around it, right? So for you go five, six, and seven, they all have the same frame, uh, you know, the external part. But what we, we're continuously working on, we do everything in-house, is like the, the sound processing, right? So you're getting a much more powerful sound processing, a much more automatic adaption to the sound environments. It will automatic, automatically switch from a noisy into a, a quiet environment. So it's a, it's a much more intelligent. So think your computer or your phone, you're, you're putting more power under the hood with your Go 7 than you are with a 6 and a 5, even though they look similar. Of course, with Ego 7, we've also been running this platform for now, you know, two years. So we've been better at, you know, how do we make it waterproof, right? So, you know, Ego 5 may be waterproof, but we haven't done enough testing and verification on it. We have done that with the 7, right? So, of course, we get better at building the product. So, you know, they're similar. They will, they're invisible, they're rechargeable, they will fit comfortably in your ear. Uh, but if you if you like sort of to customize or personalize your experience, you will get much more opportunity for that in the sevens than you will in the five or in the six. Right? If you if you really don't if you're not gonna do any of that stuff, you just want to plug them in, go be you. Um, well, the seven is automatic, so it makes it easy, but Hey, the five does the same basic thing. So I think it's a matter of who you are, what kind of, what we always tell people is it's your lifestyle, right? You shouldn't spend more than what you have to. Of course, with the seven, we're giving people, Hey, you have an extra year of warranty. You're, you're getting more of that peace of mind. Um, and, and we see the majority of the customer when they finally make the decision to get a hearing aid, they actually go for the best. Right, they, they they don't want to compromise on their health, right? So so that's what we're seeing. But yeah, I hope that kind of gives you an overview. We also have some even older ones, Hi Fi, which is an older generation, slightly different design, doesn't fit as comfortably, right? Um, but you know, we want to. We're striving. You know, we're we are a technology company, so you know, we're not buying these things off somebody else. We're, we're designing them, we're building them, we're supporting them ourselves, right? So we want to continue to make something good better, right? But that's really the thinking behind, uh, you know, the innovation that we're driving. And of course, what we're seeing, like mobile apps and so on, it's amazing what you can do. And there's constantly new opportunities to to actually drive improvements out there. And, you know, that's why we have these, you know, they're different six and sevens, right? Oh, yeah. And I, I want to tell everybody, man, I've got the sevens and it's amazing. You get them in and you basically get the app going and then it runs you through like hearing tests, actual hearing tests, and it's setting them up custom for your hearing loss. And then after, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, I was ready to go and it had all, it had my my head, basically my ears, uh, you know, factored into the settings and there I was up and running. And then I could on the fly also change the settings if I wanted to. So it's, it's really amazing the technology of this and, you know, it, it's, it's next level. So I would say if you were going to get them, I would get the sevens and the container. It's a small little like flying saucer, little disc. Yeah, there it is. And it's easy to hold. It charges up. How long they last? Two days, a day? What is it? Yeah, Charge. they'll last, you know, they're built to last, so to speak, right? But we said after you've taken them in, you know, worn for a while, like after three years, you should still have 16 hours of charge time, right? Think again, your phone, right? Even if you wear them the whole day, you, you've got 16 hours, right? So so that's that, that's how when they're fully charged, right? But you pop them into the charger, you recharge them, right? The charger can hold a couple of days before you need to recharge that one. But it's all about 
to your point about Diego Seven, that was a great speech you made there. It's all about how do we make it simple and how do we give you as a user all the tools that have been proprietary to the clinician and the doctor? Because they do the hearing test, they program it for you. But you know what? With new, with modern technology, we can make you do it yourself. So you, you don't have to go in, book an appointment, sit in a waiting room, do all that shit, right? You can actually do it yourself, right? And if you need help, call us, right? We, we got people online who can jump on a video like you and I are right now and, you know, help you out and like show you how to do it, how to clean the thing. And, you know, they can even run you through the setup that you did on your own thing. Yeah, the customer service was ridiculous how good it was. Yeah, the lady called me, making sure uh, they were good to go. And then she called me like a week later. Hey, how's it going with the, you know, are you getting used to them? She basically said after about 28 days, you're not even going to ever know that they're even in there anymore. You'll be so used to them. And, and then it'll just be game changer, you know, that which was amazing because I can't stand buying something and then you can't talk to anybody, no humans. It's just email back and forth. They're like, what? Okay. Just get on a phone for one minute and I'll tell you the problem I'm having. You know, I don't need 64 emails, you know? Thank you. No, no, this is what, I, you know, the, the, the whole thing when we started building this company was like, how do we meet the customers where they are? Some people want to do everything on their own, but that's only some people, right? Some people want help with everything. That's also only some, but, but some people are like, I just need to be pointed in the damn direction and I can figure it out on my own, right? And how do we cater for all these different needs without saying, at a year ago, you can only do this, right? Like Amazon, have you ever tried to call Amazon? Like, forget about it, right? Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're talking about people's health, right? We're talking about something that, you know, what we, we have a saying in the company, you know, we applaud every single new customer because, you know, they dare to step up, you know, and take responsibility to be a better version of themselves, right? Because they've lost their hearing, but they're doing it and it's tough because they're up against stigma, they're up against all of that stuff. It's like, you know, we got to celebrate these people and we got to, if they need help, we're there to help them. And, you know, that's our job, right? That we need, we need to get more people to hear better. All right. Tell everybody where they can get this. By the way, thanks for doing the show, man. I was really excited to talk about hearing aids. I always like to have guests on that are outside the box. You know, uh, I, I've had people that uh, design some of the best eyewear in the world. Why is the eyewear the best? Best denim in the world. Why does this denim cost so much? Uh, best boots, whatever. But uh, speakers, electronics, phones, everything. So it's always fascinating to talk to people. And when I uh, got a pair of these year ago, I was like, oh, I got to talk to these guys because this is just really cool. And I, I, I mean, my whole life is around music and doing comedy and hearing people. So it was great to talk to you. Where can they get them? And uh, is it online, a website? Yeah, yeah. No, it, again, very simple. Eargo.com, E-A-R-G-O.com. That's the website. You can learn more. There's a phone number. You can call us. You can do a hearing test. You can do a hearing screening. That's how we started the company, you know, when we went commercial right in in 2017 right so we've been on, online always right we made sure that we you know online you will also see you know the tiny little videos that will help you how to get stuff done and so on so you know we're born digital but as i you know we spoke about at the beginning the great thing that has happened in america is you know since late last year you know hearing aids can all can be bought over the counter, right? So, you know, we're working on partnerships. The partnership I was talking to you about before with Charlie, that was actually with uh, Verizon Wireless, the, the largest Verizon dealer, right? Because all of these Verizon stores are not necessarily run by Verizon. There's companies behind it who run the store. So the largest one in the country is called Victra. So Victra, Verizon Wireless. They have 1,500 locations across the nation, right? And we basically made a partnership because they, they want to, you know, what wireless stores are really good at is helping you figure out how to transfer the shit on your phone and make your phone work. Um, and it's a little bit like hearing. 
So you can walk into any of these 1,500 locations. You can find it on ergo.com. You can find it on Victra, V-I-C-T-R-A. Uh, you can also find it there. Um, well, you can just look Apple Maps or Google Maps. Just make sure you put in Victra. Um, but what we have in there is like, you know, it has like the headphones. You can go, you can screen your hearing loss, like on a calibrated headset that will really help you understand whether or not you have hearing loss. And you'll also experience through the headphones, what does it mean to have hearing loss? Like the, the nuances, the, the mumbling, all of that crap that you deal with with hearing loss, even if you don't have hearing loss, like, oh, is that how my my friend or my spouse or my girlfriend or boyfriend is is experiencing? So you can actually experience what it means to have hearing loss from. And then they have, um, you know, they have the boxes, right? They, they, they literally have the hearing aids um, on stock. So if you prefer to buy not through online and you want to pick it up somewhere so you know who you can go and beat up afterwards, you can go uh, in there, you know, they can help you set it up, but you still have access to everything that you have access to, Dean, in terms of customer service. You can always, so it doesn't matter if you buy at a Victor store or Verizon store or you buy them online with Yergo. All the support is still there. The price is the same. So you don't get a better or a worse deal, right? Because we, we don't want to have all that voodoo stuff. And am I am I paying too much? It's like, no, you're always paying the same price. And if there's a lower price somewhere else, you know, we'll make sure you get it, right. That's not we we just want you to hear better. And we're really excited about being out there because we can see a lot of people kind of want to touch and feel the product, right? Yeah. What does it feel like? And you can you can see them yourself and you can even try them on it's like, oh, shit, you know. Um, so, so that's the thinking um, behind it. What about uh, return? Somebody gets them, they don't like them. Can they return them? Is that possible? Yeah. So what we offer all customers is 45 days, right? Hey, this is a huge decision. We want you to use them and love them. And if it, for some reason, doesn't fit your ear, you just can't get comfortable, it itches your ear, or you don't get the help that you expected, you can return them. No questions asked, right? Hey, we would want to help and make sure you understand why, but like no questions asked. You have a 45-day return period uh, where you can try them on, you know, take them for a run. You know, you can wear them for like 44 days. And that I've tried, I've given it my best. I'm not having it. You return them. You get all your money back. Um, I think that's important, right? Because we we need to break a stigma here, and you know we can't put barriers up. We got to remove barriers. And if it doesn't work, you shouldn't be worried about. I spent all this money. I don't like it. Return them. We'd rather yeah. that. And or, ideally, you find something else, or you get something else. But what we want you to do is, we want you to hear about. Well, I can't thank you enough for doing the show. Thank you so much. Hopefully one day I'll meet you in person, uh, come out, see some comedy, yeah. hang out, get some dinner, and uh, where where the ear goes, where we can hear people in a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I'd love that. If you're ever up in the Bay Area, it sounds like you do a lot of stuff in the Bay Area. Um, so please, please look me up. Uh, I, would, I would really enjoy that. It would be so much fun. You know, your podcast, frankly, uh, Dean, I'm not going to blow smoke your way here, but... Uh, hey, I was like, who the heck is Dean Del Rey? I started, you know, going in, listening. Uh, I was sitting and crying in my car, uh, listening to your friend, Jimmy Hayward. And I was like, oh, shit, I got to go to the doctor. I, I, I got to take care of myself, right? Um, I, I love what you do. And it, it's been a real honor to, to be here. And please look me up and let me know if you're doing any shows. I, I'd love to. I'll be in Alameda, uh, I think it's June 10, 11. Hold on, I'll tell you right now. If you want to come, I'll put you on as my guest. No problem uh, here. Uh, June 9 and 10, I'm in Alameda. And the uh, the venue's on my website. I can't remember the name of it right now, but deandelray.com. You can see the, uh, the shows. Oh. But please come out. I'll put you on the guest list. We'll get some dinner and shoot the shit. I'd love to. It'd be great to meet you in person. And and uh ergo it, it's just a fantastic product you got there i mean just to have something inside my ear not resting on my glasses i wear really nice glasses i don't want stuff there but i do want to hear and i'm not a dummy i uh my hearing's been terrible for years 
and I didn't, you know, go to the hearing doctor and then try to get a prescription for a, a, a $10,000 hearing aid. I just didn't. Yep. I was like, I'm deaf. That's what it is. You know, hearing aids were crazy money. They're 10 grand, they're eight grand. You know, even when they're at Costco, my buddy got some there and they're still big money. I was like, God, wow. And it's worth it, of course, because you can hear, but I wanted something that was going to work for me. And of course, technology has finally caught up to, uh, I would say, almost fashion because it's inside and, and, and gone, you know? Hey, uh, well said. And, uh, thank you for, frankly, I thank every single one of our customers for, you know, we salute you for, for taking action and basically setting an example and choosing to live your life without, you know, challenges, right? You, you know, this is one, we have enough challenges. Every person has enough challenges. This is a challenge you can do something about. And, you know, we salute that. So thank you. Thank you, man. Thanks for doing the show. And I'll see you in June. Uh, there you go, guys. Get yourself some hearing aids. I know everybody listening to this podcast has terrible uh, ears because you're music freaks like me and you've been at concerts for years. So give it a try. You have nothing to lose by uh, trying out some hearing aids. And like I said, it's all on your phone. It's easy to use and it's a game changer. And, uh, you know, and you can always take them out. If you don't want to hear your spouse, you can have selective hearing like, sorry, hearing aids aren't around. I didn't hear you, honey. You know, so <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Christian, for doing the show, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me.